I don't know, I always looking for oh, a really good one. Do you want to promote oh. Angel or she's on the committee? Great. The panelists, Joe Feely, promote the panelist. Yeah, beautiful. Beautiful. You have it. Right. Angela and Joe, can you hear us? Yes. And Great. now I can Hi. talk to we're you. We're just when getting we're talking... started and we're just handling some tech things. As always, you know us, we handle tech things. Hi, Joe. Angela, you're yeah. muted too. Oh, there you go. Can you hear me though? Oh, she's, I still can't hear you. Yeah, I was wondering you know, that. Check our volume. The volume. Hmm. Okay. I'm in here. Okay. Audio settings. Oh. oh, there we go. Can you hear me now? Yeah. No volume. Beautiful. Okay. Angela, Joe, say something. Hello. Good afternoon. Absolutely. We're cooking. Okay. Hello, everyone. Um, yeah, we are starting the January 9th, 2023 CPIC meeting. Happy New Year, everyone. Um, we have uh, two members of the planning department staff here and the assistant town manager. And I think we have a couple more folks who will be joining us. Andy Sturgeon cannot join us today. Um, and we have, I believe, a member of the public, uh, Robin Brooks is with us. So at that point, we'll, I'll give her the heads up to see if she has any questions or comments for us. All right. So in reviewing the agenda, um, I have one thing to add. Does anyone have any comment or addition change to the agenda? What I would like to add is under the admin items, um, between those two bullets, <laughs> I would like to add um, review and approval of the December 20th workshop notes. That was the workshop we had with the consultants. Um, 12, 20 notes. But that's it. So hearing no other questions or comments, let's cap the agenda there and go into public comment. Um, let's see if Robin, yep, she had... Welcome, Robin. We're really glad you're with us. Thank you. I I um I don't know everybody's names. Are you Susan? I am Susan. Yes, and I believe we've met, and um, we can all introduce ourselves. But our names are also on the screen. The folks who are in the room, you have um, me. You have Rick Schultz. You have Andy Muncy, and you probably know the town um, planning department staff, Hap Stelling and Julie Erdman, and I know you know Mark. Um, so that's, that's who's true. in the room and I've online. Met Julie. Yeah, there's, there's been change, uh, and I don't know everyone, but uh, hello, and I'm happy to be here. And oh. I, um, I haven't, to be honest, been following the process that you've been going through, um, but I've become uh, aware of the um, a rezoning proposal that went directly to the planning board from Crooker Construction, um, to proposing to rezone residential land, uh, uh, and not far from my neighborhood, um, here on the west side of of uh, Topsom, you know the west of 295. And so I and many of my neighbors are very concerned about the fact that this proposal does not align with our 2019 comp plan or the 196 Carter plan. And I wondered if the committee members have taken a position on this, whether uh, you are supporting it, whether you're looking at it, discussing it, uh, you know, where, I don't know if that will come up at tonight's meeting, but I just thought I would ask those questions. Thank you. Thank you, um, Robin, for you know for bringing that to us. And just a couple of um, 
things in terms of background. Um, I know that you were involved uh, to some extent in, in terms of the whole update process. So, um, you know, I know that people are busy and plug in when they can. We always put our agendas on the town website a week in advance. And after our, our minutes are approved at the next meeting, those go on the town website as well. Um, and, you know, we've, we're just getting into our, we're, into our third year now. And um, there are some other documents on the town website um, that might be helpful. But in terms of this specific matter, you know, there, there was a, um, the request that went to the select board for a rezoning um, at the moment, it, there is no information available in terms of what the specifics of what Crooker plans to do. And so I think all of us, um, and I don't mean to speak for the committee because we haven't had a robust discussion because we don't have you know, any level of um, uh, sort of a description of what is happening where in terms of what they want to do, which I understand there is a, um, a workshop being set up or a public hearing being set up with the planning board. And I think that's the time when, you know, information is going to be provided. And I know I am looking forward to that. I'm assuming that all of the, um, you know, committee members here are looking forward to he hearing about that. And we'll, you know, we will do our best to give a thorough review to that in terms of how that looks in terms of the comp plan. Uh, Susan, I might add that the planning department hasn't even received the application. So we have no knowledge of the details of it either. Right. I think it went directly to the select board and now for a public hearing to the um, planning board. So that's kind of where things stand right now. Did any other of the committee want to? Yes. Yeah, Mark, so that's something. The procedural format is it went the request went to the select board. Select board decided to ask the planning board to hold a public hearing on it. Um, at the January 26th planning board meeting, they were going to consider setting that um, public hearing on February 23rd at the forum at Mount Ararat. The select board added to their motion last week that they expect any presentation that's going to be presented by Cripper Construction at the public hearing to be made available to the town two weeks prior so we can put it on the website. Great. So no later than two weeks before the hearing, there's going to be um, whatever materials Crooker plans to present are going to be available to um, everyone. And that presentation, the formal presentation will be on the 23rd of February and the material will be posted on the town website two weeks before. So that we're all learning that, which is great. Um, I think it's important that all of us, you know, stay tuned to that. Angela? I just wanted just to sort of um, inform others and make sure that <laughs> my uh, assumption is correct. The comp plan implementation committee, it is not within our purview to review and approve any development projects that come forward in town. Those are for planning board and select board. We may be asked as a group some questions about the comp plan, you know, where we would then as a committee decide how to answer those. But as far as the review process, we are not a part of that. This committee is not. I, I wanted Robin to understand that. Thanks, Angela. And Robin, your hand is still up. I, I imagine you have more things to say. <laughs> Just uh, really one more um, sure. comment, which is that um, I understand that Crooker Construction hasn't given any details yet. In fact, at the first select board meeting that I attended back in December on the 15th, they said they weren't going to give any details and that they wanted the rezoning to go forward and then they would let us know. Now the town has made a request. And my feeling is that anything they propose is, is just a proposal. And once they get the rezoning, they can do within the law, whatever they want to do, given that, the, you know, 
And I'm just really concerned that the comp plan didn't say anything about expanding the industrial zone west of two, uh, 295. And here we have residential land, we need more housing. And um, so, uh, Angela, thank you for that comment that I understand you don't weigh in on these things, but it seems like your job is to make sure that the plan gets implemented as the townspeople, you know, envisioned it, because we put a lot of time and effort into the sharing input, not much, just me, but hundreds of residents. So that's all. I just wanted to say there's no guarantees. Croker's not giving us any guarantees. And I'm feeling very vulnerable and um, very disillusioned with the town, um, just so you know. Thanks, Robin. Um, does town staff want to say anything about this? Because I'm just curious. I mean, th th this would be the time when um, I think we, we we're reminded that you know there's a, a plan that's developed, but not everything that happens can be anticipated in a plan. And and this plan was the result of you know probably the most robust. Um, citizen engagement process we've ever had. And that's what went into the plan. Um, there are always going to be an unanticipated things in terms of, you know, requests for any kind of change coming up. And uh, we certainly didn't know about the pandemic and housing prices and <laughs> lots of things unanticipated. Um, well, Susan, uh, you know, in response to your question i'll just sort of reinforce what i said earlier and that is this is an atypical process you know and typically when there's a development application it's received by the planning department staff uh, process it and make recommendations to the planning board or whichever body is responsible for um, decision making about that application in this case um, the application was received through the town manager's office. Um, and uh, so we, within the planning department, have yet to receive um, the details of that application. Right. Can I have one of those? Mm. Um, so if According to the, the town attorney, if committees in the town want to weigh in to make a recommendation one way or the other, uh, other than the plan with the select board that it define roles, they may do so. Um, but anything that they say is not necessarily binding. binding. Right. Um, so the kind of the committee can do what it wants. The only caveat is that if the committee does weigh in, we're going to make sure members um, are free of conflict and bias that participate. And the other thing I'll add is. If this zoning change goes through, doesn't mean Crooker can do whatever they want. Um, they still would have to comply with all the town site location requirements, and DEP's requirements. And um, so there's still going to be a lot of review and approvals that would be needed. Um, but the select board has taken the position that it's in order for people to make intelligent decisions after the public hearing, they need to have at least some idea of what's proposed or intended. Because otherwise, people fill it in with either their worst fears or what was proposed in 2018, which may or may not be what's proposed now. So that's why the unanimously the select board voted at the last meeting that we want to have materials out before the two weeks before the hearing, so that people can make informed decisions. So we'll all look for materials on this proposal to come out on the town website on or about or by. <laughs> February 9th, that's two weeks ahead of the hearing, which is gonna happen at the high school. So I think that's an important event for all of us. Okay. And I would just like to thank Robin for bringing this to us so that we have a chance to hear her concerns and think about it as committee well before the public process. So thank you, Robin. Absolutely. Okay. So, and you're very welcome, Robin, to stay with us throughout. We have Margaret with us. And um, what we've always done generally is, is sort of allow people, if you have thought questions or, you know, thoughts throughout to participate, but we're actually getting down to our business agenda item now, some of the boring stuff. Um, so let's turn to the administrative items. 
Um, actually, let me just ask Margaret if you have any um, any comments before we jump into our agenda. We're glad that you've come back <laughs> for a second meeting. Hey there, yeah, thank you. No, I don't have any questions. Just just listening in. Thank you. Great. Glad you're with us. Okay, so why don't we look at the minutes of the December 2022 meeting? Um, those were sent out with the first notice. Does anyone have any corrections, changes, anything there? Crickets. <laughs> okay, I'm going to assume that they are approved as distributed. Moving on to the notes of the December 20th meeting that we had, that was nicely scheduled with everybody's input at four in the afternoon. Everybody was able to come. That was great. Um, and those notes were put on the Google Drive. A link was given. I saw a few very helpful, much needed additions and corrections. And I accepted those. So as of, I think, this morning, they were in what I would call our final state with all of the comments and edits made and accepted. Anyone have any questions on that in terms of the committee? Okay, approved as in the Google Drive. I will send both sets of notes, minutes to Irene for posting. Great. Okay, so here's a, here's a little question for everybody. I hope if people have kind of looked at this agenda, you've had time to think about. Um, you know, during our first couple of years, not every month, but more months than not, we held a workshop meeting um, that was open to the public, but we held that workshop meeting really to help us continue our learning, meet with town planning staff and, um, and figure things out. You know, um, and so while those were, you know, meetings that were open, there was no agenda posted. And that the schedule that we picked, which was the fourth Thursday of the month, we thought worked for everybody, but it didn't work great for everybody. So I'm just wondering if um, if we move now to an as needed basis and when we feel the need, we schedule a meeting on a day and hopefully a time and the time would be 4 p.m. That worked great. <laughs> so that's my thought, that we discontinue the monthly workshop, but have workshops as needed um, for ourselves, and, and the public is always welcome, um, and do that, schedule that as, as we need to, which is always, uh, you know, we post that a week ahead to let people know so that they can tune in if they'd like. What do people think? That's way much better for me. The middle of the day is just so hard with my sort of crazy chaotic work life. <laughs> Thanks, Angel. Okay. Me too. Great. Okay. Two out of five. Yeah, but, uh, <laughs> the time, I think the timing or the time proposed is better. I would agree with everybody on that. And I'm open to whether or not we have regularly scheduled uh, workshop meetings or we do do it on an as needed basis. Okay. Anyone have a different point of view? It seems like we're going in that direction. It's fine. We, I'm just going to say that I will I'll definitely be hit or miss depending on when I know yeah, travel and whatnot. Well, yeah, I was gonna say one thing if it's if it's not on the schedule, the schedule is gonna get filled. So um it will definitely be hit or miss um, for me. Okay. 
I think the first, it took, go ahead, Angela. I was just going to say that is a really good point, Rick. Maybe it behooves us to make okay. it, schedule it, and then we can say, you know what, we don't need that, but it's on all our schedules, so it stays uh, clear. So shall we stick with the fourth Thursday and do it at four? Good for me. Or the Tuesdays would probably be better for, I'm thinking particularly from warmer weather. Yeah. Take it out for a long weekend. So when, I think when, when we met with the consultants, um, I'm just looking at my calendar here. Yes, it was a Tuesday and that worked remarkably well. <laughs> Should we move to the fourth? No, that was the third Tuesday. I'd certainly prefer it earlier in the week rather than later. Okay. The Good folks for me. Who... Say that again, Raya. Good for me. Okay. So Tuesday at four. And d does anybody care whether it's the third Tuesday or the fourth Tuesday? Nope. Yeah. They meet at 5 30. Okay. Yeah, I think. Yeah. And they they meet on the second. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Okay. So let so somebody propose something. Third or fourth I'm gonna, Tuesday. I'm gonna say the fourth just to stagger it two weeks from this meeting. Okay. So Great. Fourth Tuesday of the month. We'll hold it as needed and let it go when it's not, but put it on the calendar. Great. So are you going to need staff support for these workshops? Yeah, and I think we will know. It looks like the Energy Committee meets the fourth Tuesday. Mm -hmm. and we may be getting into some conflicts with other um, uh, committees that we have. Energy support. Committee is up for that. What time do they meet, Mark? 4.30 to 5.30. Okay. So How about the third? third? Let's move to the third Tuesday. That one's clear. All right. <laughs> we'll fill them all up by some committee or other. And my, my guess is that we're going to let them go more often than we hold them, but we'll see. Let's put them in, the, in our schedule and hold the space. And by the time we have our monthly meeting, we'll know if that's what we want to do by the time we probably have our agenda set a week ahead of our monthly meeting we'll, we'll know that okay so um i put together an outline got some input that helped to fill it out a little bit more moving on to the work plan this is a draft it was circulated um, to folks as a link. So I actually can't get into the Google Drive here because of some technological conflict. <laughs> but um, have you been added now? Yeah, great. So we could probably open that up if we need to. Um, and I kind of, you know, I started off with um, sort of a summary of, you know, where we've been to date as a way to ground myself, you know, in, uh, in what we've done. And then got into an outline of, of a work plan. And uh, I wanna thank Rick and Joe for, you know, weighing in on that a little bit. Um, Cause it feels like now that we've uh, kind of heard from the consultants in terms of when they plan to come back to us end of this month, we're, we're really able at least to take a stab at calendaring some things. Um, so would it help to bring this up on the screen? Or do people have it in front of you? Have you sort of indicated your... Um, Can we bring it on the screen? Yeah. Which, yeah. Which, which, what document do you so, want me to bring up? Um, go into, what are we going into? The work plan. If you, if you go into the comp plan, um, Google Drive and then the we're document for the work. email that yep. will yep. the folder is CPIC work plan and matrix. 
That's the folder. <laughs> and then this is down the green. Yeah, down the there. Uh, why? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll try again. How come? Do you guys see it yet? Or? Yes. Oh, you can see the document. You can see the document, Joe. Yes. I'm sorry. I said yes. I guess I didn't say it loudly enough. No, but the thing that's confusing is we can't see the document, but mm -hmm. we're gonna be able to in a minute. We're working oh. on it. Mm. Oh, well, we see it fine. <laughs> <laughs> you can just tell us what you think. <laughs> I, I also have it printed out in front of me. So yeah, yeah, that's what I've got. If if we're in uh, fixing the the electronic issue uh, at the moment, I, Susan, I wanted to point out for future reference that despite the fact that there are six of you apparently in the room. <laughs> only one name shows up and that's that's Julie's. So if we have public members in the future, we, sh we probably should introduce ourselves. Right, and we did that just at the, or I gave everybody's name um, and people sort of, you know, indicated who they were. Um, right. for them. Yeah, yeah, but that's a good, good point. Thank you. Okay. We're getting closer. Oh my gosh. Try to click on that. I don't want me to. I think we, it's probably a setting just in, you have to do with the share your screen. Yeah, that right there, that little. It's not letting me click on it. <clears throat> oh. Try to, oh, you know what? Here. Over there in uh, the corner. I can do it on, I gotta come over here. There's always more than one way to. <laughs> All right. Thanks so, for your patience, everyone. And stop the share. That's the only question. Let's give them. One person share is how to be in sharing option. Maybe if I do this, would that help? Do I they can see it fine. Maybe just in this your computer. Should mm -hmm. I click on the document itself, and maybe that'll show up in this, so we get that window from you. It, it might mean need the multiple shares rather than one share. How about this, Andy? Can you log into the meeting, join the meeting, and then you share yours, and then we'll save Julie's to run the meeting with, and then. Okay. I try that because I know Susan and I've done that and that works pretty good. Okay. Yeah. So you want to unshare Julie? Actually, I just well, I guess it doesn't matter. I did one participant can share at a time or uh, multiple. Multiple. Yeah. yeah. But you don't want to see them. But I think the you want to unshare. We'll let Andy share. And then yeah. once Andy logs in. <clears throat> Promote Andy, I think, to a panelist. And then he's gonna gonna have to put his yeah, volume I, down. Yeah, I did that. Great. <laughs> You're a pro at this. Where'd he go? He's a panelist. Okay, okay great. And I think Andy yeah. will share his screen on the computer. Okay. Let's try that. There. Did I show up yet? I think it's June. Oh, it's underneath. Yeah. Maybe slide this. There we go. Let's minimize this box or slide it down a little. Oh. Oh. Let's see. Any options? Do 
speaker. Try speaker. Yeah, try that. You are viewing Andy Muncy's ah. screen. Okay, if I'm the exit full screen, I'm going to try to double click it on that. <laughs> so now we need to make that large. Yep. Yeah. Great. Right. Yay. <laughs> now you guys can still see it? Yes. Sure. Yep. Perfect. Right. Okay. So the first three pages is really background and it goes over some things that you know, the decisions and actions we took, um, and, you know, as part of our working together. Um, if I think it's worth just scrolling through that um, slowly, if anybody wants to sort of comment on any of these things, you know, administrative decisions, actions, um, and then it gets into how we, you know, really with staff, um, advice we got into taking some steps around streets for people and then move quickly into the land use zoning decisions that led to recode and you know i think it's worth um you know we sort of giving a little bit of time if if people want to say anything about how you know, we, it's a it's a a good time to sort of critique ourselves. It, it's it's a good thing to um, sort of acknowledge good decisions, but also if we need to change the way we do things, let's let's get those on the record. Because I think there's you know room for input and room to change things, um, and. I think when we come together as a committee to talk about um, how to proceed, I think that's that's when our strength emerges and good decision making happens. So obviously, matrix review is a very short item because it's just it it took a long time, but now that has has been done and it's available for liaisons to work with um, all of the different lead entities. So let me just pause and see if anybody would like to sort of make some comments. Okay. You took the background just like I did. It's background. So let's move on to the work plan. Now, you know, I have to say that when <clears throat> Rod Melanson drew up, and I imagine he and Andrew worked together to draw up the work plan outline for us. Um, um, you know, we we took it as it was given. Um, I honestly couldn't have done a lot at that time to make any changes. Um, but now, you know, I think it's it's we've got some experience, and but I can I thought it might be worthwhile to keep that outline. And what you see in italics is the new stuff. And I think the first place where we really get into um, you know, something to chew on is number C under number one, which is, you know, let's document what goals we want to focus on. Um, we have a sense, at least a little bit, of how long it takes to move some things forward. Um, and one of the things we tried to do in this outline is actually once you get into the land use zoning updates to kind of put some calendar dates in there. You know, what can we accomplish in the next year? Um, well, I'll offer this as a suggestion. <clears throat> you may have heard it from me before, but I think it's really important to 
communicate with the community as a whole and with specific stakeholder groups about the intent of the new code um, and how people, how corporate entities, how you know, um, groups such as environmental um, um, players are going to be affected by this. And so what's the program for reaching out to them and and um, communicating both the intent of the plan, but also receiving their feedback? When you, t you mentioned specifically environmental players, what do you have in mind there, Hap? Well, I, it, it, it's just a general category. Ah, so nothing, a, nothing specific. Not, nothing specific, okay. but okay. you know, I'm, I'm just you know, there are a lot of seniors in Topsom, so you know, um, uh, they constitute a, a large segment of the population. So, oh, this is the notes. <laughs> is, is there a program for reaching out to them as a collective entity? and receiving their feedback. Um, and then incorporating um, aspects of that feedback into um, the plan, or sorry, the, the code as it evolves and, and um, moves toward adoption. Um, we get into some of that in this outline, I don't know if you've had a chance to look at no, it. No, I have. I'm just sort of, you know, I'm just sort of raising the question. Yeah. Um, and, you know, just, you know, is there a, a more structured approach to doing that and, and timelines associated with it? Well, you know, I'm delighted to have any of the committee members join in on this. My approach to this is that we, um, I mean, one of the things that the planning department did, and it was kind of a year and a half ago now, I think, is um, stakeholder meetings um, were, were held by Zoom. I think 30 different people, um, landowners, developers, all of the folks involved in really, having a stake in how changes are happening in the center growth area. Those folks were invited to um, Zoom meetings. You know, that was described in the background piece. And I, I assume that there were notes somewhere on that, but there were, those were fairly well attended. There was feedback. Um, right now, we're kind of waiting, I think, to have a uh, a, a closer to final draft ready to go to the planning board at some point of the center of recode, the form-based code section. Um, we're, we're hoping to see a, a revised draft of module one. My, you know, um, I mean, one of the, the general picture of what's, what's intended here was shared. It was shared with the town. In a, in a very open way. It was shared, there was a, a session at the library. I'm not sure if you were aware of that half yeah, no, October. No, I, I, yeah, I, I am aware. I'm just sort of, you know, sort of doing some forward thinking and yeah. sort of saying, you know, is there a structured program? Did, are there specific groups that we should be reaching out to? Yes. As there elements are. of this plan? There are. There are. Okay. Yeah. And all of that um, is very in, in is documented in a very detailed way in the Google Drive. Um, you know, there are loads of people who were involved in the update process. Um, there are lots of committee members, there are lots of constituencies, they're all outlined in the Google Drive. Um, and so, you know, once we my thinking was let's have a work plan. <laughs> Um, and then let's get the communication public engagement process um, mapped out. So it's a sort of, you know, do you do one before two or do you do two before one? So we're doing the work plan tonight. Okay. So um, 
that's where we are. And we're not looking at the work plan, at least we in the room are not, because poor Andy has to do two things at well, once. Andy keeps dreams. <laughs> I know. <laughs> uh, so, because um, I know everybody probably has a chance, has had a chance to look at the first three pages. Is there anything anybody wants to say? And we'll just sort of dispense with that mm -hmm. and move on to page four. Yeah, we're on page four. Great. Great. Um, so I'll just say thanks for pulling this together. You know, sometimes we're really digging into things and I wonder the progress that we're making, but this really is a nice um, outline of all the work we've been doing together. So thank you for that work. It will also help us sort of update the select board on what we've been doing. Um, and that's, I think that probably will be scheduled for early February. Um, and by that time we will have seen back um, from uh, Leslie Oberholzer, you know, what she's going to be doing in terms of the center of town recode. So why don't we just scroll down and get into the land use zoning updates. You know, when we start to think about like, because this does get start to get into the process stuff. And, you know, the, the way that CPIC and the planning board have kind of done the handoff in terms of who's going to work on what. Um, Hap has let us know that he and Julie met with uh, Don Spann to talk about how things will move forward um, with the planning board in terms of those chapters um, that Kirk has worked on of the sort of the update cleanup chapters one and then three through 16. And they're gonna be having monthly meetings, second planning board meeting of the month. Um, those meetings are always open to the public. And it, it probably would be a good, good time to get something up on, you know, to do something in terms of um, letting the community know that these things are happening. What's the best way to do that? Let's talk about it. Um, but that's gonna be happening over the next four months while we work with Leslie around, you know, finishing up module one, getting into module two and three and the, um, and the MPD, which apparently is drafted, but we haven't seen. So I'm very glad to hear that um, that Leslie assures us that modules two and three are much less onerous than module one was. So, um, so as a, sorry, Angela, just as a, a slight correction to the detail as a result of this Crooker public hearing being held on February 23rd, the education sessions with planning board have now been Starting pushed back to March, March. Yeah. Starting in March and ending in June. Okay, so March through June. Okay, so we'll adjust accordingly. I can only have public hearings on so many items in one evening. And Raya, go ahead. I was just trying to um, seek out which detail captures uh, when we start communicating with the community, which which of those line items, which part of this document. Um, it doesn't, that's not specifically there. But it could be part of recode in the timeline and plan that we had with the consultants Part of that was the initial outreach to the public, you know, sort of getting them oriented and then some public outreach when a draft is ready. So right. there could be like a three, small I, three, communicate with the community and seek feedback or something like that. And part of what I think we haven't had a chance to talk about with the consultants is, you know, would it be appropriate to hold virtual public sessions on each module, um, you know, and, and have invitations out? Like when, when module one is in sort of final draft, I would expect that that's gonna be shared then with 
um, well, it, and I, I don't know if it's best to do all three modules to the planning board, you know, I, I would defer to the consultants. They've done this kind of thing before. What's, what's the best way to maximize the use of committee, scarce committee members time, you know, and would it be best to simply invite the public to a planning board workshop on this um, and, and, and prepare ahead of time with, you know, some kind of public notice on the website, Facebook, um, piece in the crier. So, I mean, I think it will become apparent once we talk about these actions, we can then backfill and say, where are the public information aspects of this? Where does that make sense? But it makes sense to me to get these activities at least roughed out together rather than just, you know, one or two people, and then and then look and see where the the public information aspects happen. Have you had some ideas on that, Raya? Because I know you've had a chance to look at this. I've had a chance to look at this document. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, um, well, yeah. Of course, we've all gotten it in our email. So I'm um, just asking if you've had any ideas about the sort of, you know, the public information parts of it. Yeah, I mean, I had started to capture the note where you said, uh, consider holding public review sessions with all three modules, you know, just as an idea. And I'm looking to see where that would lie. I just penned it in, in pink under three. We're looking at one and two right now. Three shows in June through September, but I don't know. I just, when you were talking about it, I was looking for where it was labeled and I didn't see it. So I was trying to figure it out wasn't. what it yeah. You are absolutely right. You're pointing to something not there. It's a missing item and it's great to fill it in. And I think it's helpful to fill it in over that period of time, you know, because it can, I think that's the kind of thing to have some kind of regular way in which the public can, um, can you know, hear about this and have a chance to talk about it. We, we, we need to be in, and it makes sense now to think in terms of June is when the planning board will be finishing up their review and comment, their feedback on those chapters that Kirk has been working on. So it's really when that's completed, I think for, we'll be able well, to. Well, um, let me just say a couple of things. Um... One is, you know, if this is the path you want to go down, I would certainly consult with the planning board before you go down that path. And secondly, the intention of these sessions with Kurt was really to educate the planning board about um, the form based code um, um, format and process in particular. Uh, because I think it's fair to say that they are not as aware and not as up to date on those elements of the recode as CPIC is. Uh, but so. that's I'm my that's not my understanding, Hap. But let's talk about it. My understanding is those chapters are the chapters that Kirk has been working on, the update cleanup chapters. But those that's not Article Two is the form based code chapter right so that's not what they're looking at article two they're going to be looking at those other chapters sort of two or three at a time and actually because they're familiar with the current code they've been working on that for years so they're going to be able to i would hope give that give some real solid feedback on the revisions and the new work that Kirk has well done. and and you know you're absolutely right about that but part of the intent is for the planning board to provide feedback um, to the consultants but I think when when Don and Julie and I first sat down to discuss this um, it wasn't envisioned that this was uh, these were going to be open sessions with the public and, and the, you know, it's more, this was more um, educational sessions for the planning board and for the planning board to 
provide feedback to the consultant on the work that's been done. Um, so, um, but their workshops are always open to the public. Oh, right? absolutely. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah. no, no. Um, okay. I'm just Let's sort of... just hear what Angela has to say. I just the think there's a, a definitional thing going on here. I think when Susan said the public, you know, it's because the public is allowed at the workshops. I don't think you were saying that those were the public communication sessions that we will have at some point after we talk to the consultants about the right time to plan those. So I think we, we were just definitionally not saying the same thing. I mean, my sense of when the public sessions that, thanks for that <laughs> clarification, Angela, the public sessions that are aimed at the public, not where the public can come to a planning board workshop, I my sense is that that's best done once we've sort of weighed in and said this is and where the planning board has weighed in and said look we're happy with this product let's share this and get the feedback of the town um, on this because the people who work most closely with it have looked at it carefully it's um, it's consistent with the comp plan vision and and it's ready now for sort of a rollout in a more detailed way to the public. Now, do we do that? You know, I'm, I'm not sure how we do that, but um, you know, that can be done virtually and it, or it can be done in person. You know, I, I think back to the June, I don't know what, 2017 session um, at the library where we had an all afternoon session with displays all around the walls. People got a chance to look at you know, what was being proposed. Um, you know, I don't, I, I don't know what to envision here, but I think we can be guided by the consultants who have done this before in helping residents of the town kind of get their minds around what's happening. Anybody have anything to add here? It sounds like we're both kind of saying the same thing. Yeah. yeah. Get yeah. get it get it roughed out, get it worked, worked out so that the planning board, town staff, CPIC consultants are all on the same page about what's being presented and then start the focusing on public outreach. Right. And the people who mm -hmm. use the code, you know, developers, architects all of those groups that are detailed in our Google Drive folder, those people are gonna be looking at what we do. And those people may be interested in coming to the planning board workshops starting March through, March through June. So that's, that would be an early look. And then by the time both the center of town form-based code chapter and all of the other chapters have gone through all of that feedback and revision process, at that point, you know, is now we're into July, <laughs> you know, sort of July, August, September. Um, I mean, I think some of this is gonna be tweaked and shaped um, once we talk to, certainly talk to the planning board. I mean, none of this is for us to make hard and fast decisions on. This is, you know, for us to sort of frame out what we see as a likely way for our, the work to go. You know, I'm envisioning some, you know, newspaper coverage, some town website focus, um, some maybe to complete the process of the frequently asked questions um, that we started 
And I think we're probably close to being able to finalize that now. I would love to take up in our next meeting, um, but it depends on what we're looking at from Leslie, but to spend a chunk of time at our next meeting on communications and public engagement, really to sort of break that down. You know, there's a whole lot of things that are possible, but what's realistic in terms of the time that we as committee members have available and with the guidance of an input from staff, um, you know, what's realistic? So um, on that note, I think the contract calls for three more visits from Leslie and Kirk to the town. Um, so what are the best opportunities uh, to slot those visits in um, as part of this framework? I didn't know that that, that was the case, three more visits. I. I, I thought right that there were I, I thought that there were three visits, period. <laughs> I thought yeah, there's more what Susan said, three total. Yeah, they've made one. Because they came to the forum that was at the library. Yeah, they were here in October mm -hmm. 2021. Well, that's what I meant. Is three so more there's visits. two more. Two more. Two? They've been yeah, here they once. Came back, they came once. Yeah. Okay. Well, all right. Well, that being said, when's the best opportunity? to have those visits? I think it's probably wise for us to have that conversation with the consultants so that we can not just ask that question, when's the best time, but is that the culmination of maybe two or three virtual sessions where people have actually um, had a chance to review some things and think about it, um, you know, when, when people come to a session and they're seeing information for the, for the first time, it's not a terribly productive session. But if we have a public session with the consultants in person, if that builds on two or three prior encounters, either in print or in, in a virtual format, um, maybe that would help to make it a more productive session. That's my thought. I'd love to hear others' thoughts. Yeah, so so I'll just say, so what we're focused on here is just developing a work plan. So That's everything right. we're talking about now, I'd say would fall under the category of developing a schedule for the coming year. You know, what are some target public sessions, visits, you know, as as we've outlined here, so I would say that kind of captures the the work plan objective that we're discussing right now is developing that schedule with maybe some milestone purposes of the consultant's visit and the time frame for that. So, I mean, just looking at you know an agenda item like this where we devote 30, 40 minutes to thinking about you know that kind of public session um, and pu public information next time i mean i think february is not uh, is a good time for it it depends on what's happening um, you know with leslie's revision and it's possible by our February meeting that we will have even met with her. But it, you know, when we schedule that, I think it's beginning to lay out that um, that communication piece um, is a separate item. It's not something not to think about here, but it's not something to focus on here. Um, I think this is the rest of the work moving forward. And then when do we share that? What's the best way to share that with the public? Um, so these are Andy's notes. I'm trying to show <laughs> no, you. No, <laughs> you are doing I'm doing a good job of either one. No, you're, <laughs> you're fine. Um, when, when is, um, can one of the, can Angela or Joe share their screen with the notes or with the work plans that you can 
Sounds great on the notes. Yeah, that'd be great. I wonder if that's possible. I'm. If someone allows me to share, I could probably do that. I think. I think we, if you just stop sharing, that Angela will be able to do that. Oh. Let's see. Before I undertake that, I want to say one thing, because um, sure. maybe HAP has not seen this, and I know I really want to get onto our work plan and not talk about the, <laughs> the timeline for the recode, but it's just important. The memorandum number two that we got from the consultants, you know, things may have changed because it's been a long time, but they laid out a timeline that said when we're going to do what and when they're going to visit and when all the public engagement is happening. So I feel like we're rehashing we may want to revise it, but it's not like it hadn't been planned and thought out with Rod and Andrew and all of us. So I think right. we should refer to that initial work if we want to change it, because it was a plan that tied to their contract. It That's true. And that's the, uh, the unfortunate thing about that is we don't have the experience with us any longer that went into that. I mean, Kirk does. But all of what's involved there, you know, th there's a lot of stuff assumed in that time frame, And that was not unpacked very well in my memory. And we don't have the contract. Um, if, the, if we had the contract shared with no, us, I that would be helpful it. probably. Uh, mm -hmm. We do. We we, you, no, you do, but we I don't think it's not on the Google Drive for oh, yeah, CPIC to see. We could put it there though. That would be great. That would be great because I think so, sort of seeing what all of those pieces are, that would be it would have left my brain in a more relaxed state. Yeah. <laughs> but my point is not that the timeline is still correct, because everything has gotten off kilter with staffing changes, but the components are, you know, obviously right. we are considering a substantive and robust outreach to the community once we have a draft. Right. Right. But, and, and it was not clear to me sort of how many drafts are we going to go through and how does that draft and the feedback process work? But we've, we've figured that out. You know, we are doing an aspect of it. The planning board with staff and the consultants are doing an aspect of it. And all of that is coming to um, right. a conclusion around June, July. So yep. you're, you're right with that, Angela. But and then the, the question is, what is that public process going to look like? What, what would be most effective for Topsum? Because I think the consultants will expect us to help them understand what works best for Topsum, you know? Yep. So this isn't the time, but I feel like we did go through all of this with Rod and Andrew, and we have to just refresh our memories. I mean, I have clear memories of this. So maybe this could be a workshop for our committee. So we're not doing it tonight. Yep. Yep. You're absolutely right. Because it is 533. And I know some of us want to attend the select board oh. session that's coming up at six. Yeah. Um, so. So, so I'm going to try to share this. Um, right. Google is not my first language, so. <laughs> That's not sharing, is it? No. Yeah. Angela, you're, you need to use that share screen button within Zoom. Yeah, it's just not, um, I think it's because I need to download it that this is happening. So if there's something else you could talk about while I struggle through this, that would be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, I mean, we can go on to other aspects of the plan. I, also, you know, I'll share my screen. And Thanks, Maya. Yeah, beautiful. Beautiful. There we are. Great. Okay. We're 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 here. Okay. Yep. Okay. So you know the the um all of these dates that sort of bring us up to um where we're going to be starting to deal with public sessions of all three modules. Um, I mean, a lot of that will have to be discussed with the consultants. 
I wanted to pose the question, um, you know, things always take longer than we think. That's what I always have to remind myself. Um, I would love to, I mean, the, the idea has been raised to have a special town meeting. Um, I don't know if November, 2023 is a realistic goal or not. Um, I'm guessing not. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, knowing how things always work a lot slower than you would like them to. So we might actually be aiming for a 2024 May town meeting um, is really the more likely prospect. I would strongly encourage that. I feel like over the many years that I've been here, I just feel like when there are big substantive issues for the town to consider, it goes much better there's more public trust when it's at a regular town meeting rather than a small special meeting. Okay, and you've seen that. I haven't. I appreciate hearing that. Probably others have seen that as well. <laughs> um, okay. So let we will make that change. And that will give us more time to think about more public engagement and now, oh, go ahead. Yeah, you know, good, better, different. It, you know, just observing it from the comp plan development, the more active participation I think you're going to receive in the fall time frame. I think you're going to be hard yep. pressed to get yep. much public anything over the summer. summer. Yeah. So all your feedback is going to come in the fall, and you're not going to have time to incorporate it for the November meeting. Right. So if we do sort of a September through November series of public sessions of some kind, um, that will lead us up to when we need to be thinking about the warrant. Um, yeah. Okay, that was an easy <laughs> move. Um, are folks ready to move on to item B? That that might feel like kind of an odd thing, which is um, what I'm thinking about there is, you know, we've been so focused so heavily on the center growth area of town. Um, one of the things that HAP raised was, you know, the the chapters that Kirk is working on, the contract that we have with the consultants does not include zoning changes, but the comp plan is such that zoning changes might be anticipated in certain areas. And it's not about getting that started, but just the beginning process of beginning to identify that. And some of those, that's likely gonna be done by other committees. I'm thinking about the Conservation Commission um, for one. Um, so I, I just put this down to think that, you know, if we're focused on this, and this is a big part of our work, right through town meeting 2024, um, there are other aspects of and other big ideas in the plan that should at least be considered. And, and half raised the opportunity the possibility of having a project for a, a Bowdoin intern. And I think, you know, there's always been a Bowdoin intern, a couple of them in the town office. And sometimes they've focused in one way or another um, in ways that can be helpful to CPIC, to the, uh, the implementation process or the update process. Um, so I'm just thinking about that to review the plan and think about zoning code changes in certain areas. That's so it's less for us and and more a thought for. Um, I, I have a slight nod from <laughs> from Julie, Angela. I would just say um, 
from working with many Bowdoin interns over the years, I just don't know. They would not have the experience to look at the comp plan and recommend zoning changes. That's way beyond any Bowdoin intern that I have ever worked with. Okay. I, however, I think this bullet is important as a task for our committee and planning staff to talk about, okay? There's others, we've been focused on these things. We need to focus on more stuff. I think if planning staff directed us to, I think that would be the way to go. And I know they're busy, but I don't think an intern could be up to that task. So so let me, let me just clarify that, Angela. I mean, the, the intention here was for staff to provide direction and oversight to the intern and and to regularly review the work that was being done so it's not like we were letting them adrift on a boat and sort of just sort of saying go go figure it out and give us a report uh, the the intention was for staff to provide um a directed uh scope of work that we would monitor on a regular basis um, and, you know, that, that all assumes that we are going to get an intern. We don't know that at this point in time. Um, the other thing that, that I can sort of speak to is um, staff will probably have a role in making revisions to the draft as it comes forward, too. And so, you know, um, we've already had these discussions with uh, the town manager's office and others about uh, revisions that staff could make um, as um, you know the the drafts from the consultants um, come in and we get feedback and, and especially in in areas that are not uh, centered on form based zoning um, there's probably going to be more need for um, uh, staff intervention in in those areas. So are you talk, talking about that you know, separately from an intern? Well, it, it could well, it could be both. It could be both that uh, we could we could uh, find a scope of work for an intern to do that we could supervise um, and or, staff could do it on their own. What I was thinking about here when I sort of landed on this was two years ago, I think we had a Bowdoin intern named Angus who did, I mean, and he did a presentation for CPIC. And so I think it blew my mind in terms of looking at all of the development that had taken place over the last, I don't even know what, decade maybe, um, and, and looking at, you know, creating a map that showed sort of the advance from one decade to another and, and really looking at, um, it, it gave good background for why the comp plan is what it is in 2019 to sort of do what we can to check sprawl and to guard open areas and natural spaces um, to the extent that we can. So let's just leave this here. I don't think there's anything to be done with it in terms of a work plan tonight, but it's something that could at least trigger, you know, some focus of CPIC with planning staff over the coming months. Um, Okay, so part of, I think, getting into this next item, C, um, I wanted to sort of give us a few minutes to talk about, you know, where have we gotten bogged down? What we should we change going forward? Um, and I put out some things to consider. This kind of dovetails with our next agenda item, which is 
the matrix and any revisions. Um, let me just ask Angela as we start this, have you heard from CPIC members about you know, liaison assignments that they particularly want to hang on to or give up? <laughs> No, so I just made them. <laughs> I have a draft to show people right. and I figured if I did it, people will then say, I don't want that. I would rather That's have right. that. So That's I just right. did it. Great, okay, <laughs> thank you. So our, would it, let me just see what our time is. We have 15 minutes because we'll end sharp on time. Um, I wanna just allow maybe five minutes at the end to, look at those assignments, um, or people can just go away and look at them on their own. Oh, yeah, um, I was just about to say, where can I find it? Because I'm looking in the Google Drive and that, so there's a matrix in here that's yeah. 2022, November. It's it's the um, assignments, let's see. Uh, yeah, it's, yeah, that's it. That's what it looks like. <laughs> wait, wait uh, where is that again? I'm not finding it. It's in uh, department, department updates. Department update. Oh, okay. And I, I'm not sure, but to, to tell me, Raya, I, have you done a little bit of reorganizing of the folders or not? No. Oh, okay. Um, I, I didn't create. Well, I, I don't know if the department updates folder is helpful because it kind of hides content. I don't think so either. Yeah. I, Rick, I think that you made that folder is can we do we just pull those things out to the higher level? I don't know. I found it was helpful to have it all in there and not with all the other stuff, but it maybe everyone's brain works differently. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> At least I know where to find it now. Yeah. So look for the department all updates right. folder yeah. and in there you will find yeah. Um, and you know, we we now we know that Andy, you're going to be definitely doing planning board yeah. stuff. Um, and I just thought, you know, it might be worth spending just a few minutes on some of these things. You know, um, would it be wise at this point to have regularly scheduled meetings of folks of CPIC planning de department? planning board, town manager, and assistant town manager, like maybe every couple of months, I'm thinking that that might be a useful thing. We managed to clear up some misconceptions and move things forward um, in ways that we, doesn't happen when you just have, you know, one or two entities. But if everybody's at the table, um, I think, Um, Susan, didn't you have a note to add a new committee in there? Was that the um, community center committee? Uh, it, was, it was a note somewhere in here. That's why I was scrolling while you were talking. Um, I said to replace the community fund with the complete streets committee or For the bicycle pedestrian committee, the okay. bicycle pedestrian committee. Yeah. And that was complete to the community fund because I don't think the community fund is anything for us to do much with. Well, I just one, wanted to just while we were here capture that. That's all. Yeah, and also the, the I mean the community, community fund community. must have something because there's a number there for that they're the lead on something. Yeah, we'd have to literally assess. You know, look yeah. at the lines in the matrix yeah. and see which ones are assigned to who. And um, we we ought to that. also put the community center committee there somewhere as well. Oh, now you're messing up my distribution. I know, of... <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's a never ending piece of work. Um, yeah, I mean, we'd have to go to see which items that are in that map to that kind of committee, like maybe, maybe nothing really. Like when the plan was approved and completed, there was no energy committee. Right. We worked it out, there is a committee and things got assigned to them. Yeah, so, things got pulled out of uh, TCC and made more sense for energy committee. So we'd have to just look to see which items fit these guys better than where they're currently landing. And that's been identified in the matrix. So it's just a matter of pulling those out. Oh, I didn't realize things got tagged with these two committees. Not, not the two, just bike ped. Okay. Okay. Um, so 
I'm looking at how we've gotten bogged down and how we should change going forward. Oh, so we're done with, with us. You want me to close it? No, <laughs> I mean, I want to do this in the last five minutes is what I want to do with this. Um, but I want to, I'd like to spend five more minutes on this draft work plan. Okay, sounds good. So we're really sort of looking at, uh, and we're not going to get through it, that's for sure. But uh, where we are is item C, 2C. And oh, okay, uh, yeah. I was looking for that. Page five. I will give you some feedback on what you asked about the every other month getting everyone together. I think it's too much. I mean, I think <laughs> once a year or twice a year, if we wanted to refocus everyone on the comp plan, I just think that's way too often given what everyone else has on their plates. That I means especially the planning board. Yeah, I, I appreciate that caution. And I, what I wonder is maybe just, maybe not the full board, but I, I just recall how things had gotten a little bit stuck and everybody being together that one time, the, the you know, Rick and I, Don and Scott, um, Mark and Derek, Hap, you know, that group, um, and, and everybody from the planning department was there. So all three members were there. It, and maybe there's no reason for a regular meeting, but to, to keep that as an idea that on occasion, that might be wise to schedule. I'm thinking a couple of times a year as needed, as needed. So I'll put that. Thank you so much for the caution. <laughs> I will change that to not regular, but as needed. <laughs> Because until that meeting, it hadn't crossed my mind how valuable that full meeting could be. All right. So I just, I put down that one of the areas that we um, got bogged down in was that, that I don't think we as a committee were terrific at giving um, the consultants clear feedback. We got better <laughs> as we went along. Um, but I think um, that's probably slowed us down a bit. Um, and if anybody wants to weigh in on that, please do. I feel like um, I'm weighing in a lot, but I feel like our communication with the consultants was very good when Andrew and Rod were here, who were with, you know, in on the RFP and hiring the consultants and setting up the plan. They provided us, we're just a layman's committee, we're not running it, they provided us with direction on when we needed to weigh in and what, and then we're the liaison with the consultants. So I think it, in my opinion, worked fine then. And then no staff has been able to get up to speed on this yet. There's been just a lot of turnover. So I'm hopeful we'll get back to that. I think the model worked. I think it's just been disrupted. So there's this a getting up to speed. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I don't know, you know, with with the two of you, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming that as we move forward, because now we've sort of, there was a lot of figuring out how to move forward. And now that we've figured some of that out, I think it's clear where people focus and when changes need to be made, we'll, we'll make them, we'll raise the question. Anyone else want to weigh in? All right, oh, Joe. I, I just wanted to uh, second what Angela said, and also to point out that that we spent uh, an extraordinary amount of time uh, with the initial uh, part of the form based code. Uh, oh. It was uh, it was simply incredibly complex, not complex, I take that back. It was too fine grain. And uh, I think I'm hoping that the changes that were made will allow us to move for, forward more quickly and with greater, greater clarity. Uh, I know speaking for myself that it was uh, 
it just was was difficult. Um, we were we were focusing on too many small pieces. So hopefully that is behind us. But that really, if, as I look back on the meetings that we had, that took uh, a very substantial percentage of our time. We were in the weeds very deep. <laughs> mm. <laughs> yep. Oh, okay. I'll kind of yep. either echo or build off that a little bit more or contradictory points that, you know, one of the things I found a little bit shocking or, you know, frustrating early on was very minimal comments in the review packages that we got. Um, but when we got together as a group to discuss them, there was a lengthy discussion, feedback, a lot of building on that. So, you know, better capturing those initial comments, feedback. Um, By the committee. Counterpoint within the committee ourselves, yeah. yes. Yeah. All right, are we ready to move on to uh, number three? material review in more manageable size with clear direction on timing for review and comment. I think this is hard to argue with. <laughs> that that I think, you know, that's just been described in terms of the um, fine grain nature and the newness of the material. Um, all right, delegation of workload. I think, you know, we've had some turnover ourselves and a time for people to sort of come on board, get up to speed. And, um, and I think, you know, just speaking for myself, I think it's easier now to delegate. Um, I think, uh, yeah. Is that an okay addition? Yeah, absolutely. I, th I think one of the things that is going to become really important in terms of the public engagement and the communication to town residents. Um, and that they just they never want to leave the idea um, unspoken to recruit additional members. We have two open slots, and I think it's it's been um, wonderful to have both Andes join us um, and we do have two open slots so it's not something that gets advertised I actually saw in uh, I think it was the Times record that a town around was I think it was Bath recruiting for open positions on committees town committees it's like yep that's a good idea so I suggest we just stop there and just for the last two minutes, um, just if Raya, could, you could open up the, what do you call that thing? The matrix, the, the assignment sheet. Yeah, great. So Angela, I'm sorry we messed with your- <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> your I'll assign, once we decide how many tasks there are, we can assign people to those. But generally what I did was, I think we all agreed, we didn't necessarily need two committee members for each thing, except right. the primary ones like the town manager, planning department, select board. So basically what I did is I kept you and Rick on what I felt were the ones that the chair and vice chair should be on. So you'll see those are town manager, planning department and select board. Yeah. And then I basically just broke it down. So every no one got more than four assignments and but everyone had at least three. And I tried to keep people in ones that I knew they already had a connection with, but this may not be perfect. It can be changed around. Great. All right. So let's all take a few minutes on our own time to, to look at this stuff. Um, it actually dovetails with or segues into the next item. Th there was a suggestion on the work plan to put these updates by liaisons with entities responsible for lead and support to put that as a standing agenda item 
And I think that makes sense. Um, and because I think we all need to be reminded of, you know, that this is something to bring back to the committee. And if anybody is having trouble meeting with the folks that they're assigned to, let's talk about it and strategize. Um, and I think- Is it helpful if we encourage people to track their meetings? Yes, yeah. yeah. so much. But this is the same document, right, Raya? Yeah, it's just a tab. Yeah. Yeah. A... yeah. And a lot of them have been tracked, but not all of them. And the people who are doing the meetings, scheduling and having those meetings should just put that information in there, if you wouldn't mind. And that takes care of one of the much later agenda items, which is succession and continuity. I remember that there was a, um, a select board member very concerned about that. So let's leave it there. And can, um, I, can I say yeah. one more thing I really wanted to say? <laughs> sure, the, sure. Uh, down at the bottom, the orange uh, things are have question marks where there's been staff turnover. And now I'm not sure who the staff, you know, who it should be. You know, right, most of right. them were John Shattuck. Um, yeah. Most of them are John Shattuck. <laughs> yeah, that was me. You so you're doing. TDI yeah. and community um, fund. No, 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 I'm, I'm CPIC. Right, but we're looking here at the orange things on the screen. You would the have economic to speak, development. Speak to Derek yeah, we'll that. speak to Derek about that. We'll fill you in, Angela. I'm talking we... the Historic District Commission. Right. So historic District Commission, where order. is that? Okay, good. There's one. Yay! We can unorange that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Sure. And I think Mark Hagen, Mark with a C, Hagen, is doing the bike ped committee. Yes. That's correct. Great. And I think the others, my, my guess is that for the time being, the TDI and economic development are going to be Derek but that's just for the time being. All right, we are two minutes over. Apologies, thanks everybody. I'm going downstairs. <laughs> See you soon, thank you all. Thank you. Thank you.